We will now hear the statement of the Prime Minister of Israel, Mr. Benjamin Netanyahu. Prime Minister Mitsotakis, uh, our good friend Kiriakos, uh, welcome to you and your ministers on behalf of the Israeli government uh, and the people of Israel. Uh, this is the first G2G, perhaps in the world, I don't know, in the corona period, or one of them. Uh, and uh, I think this reflects uh, two things. It reflects uh, the fact that we have been both uh, quite successful in battling the corona epidemic, and it also reflects the tremendous friendship uh, that is uh, building between uh, uh, Israel and Greece. Uh, recently, we celebrated 30 years of upgrading the relationship to full diplomatic relations. This was done by your late father, uh, who was also the Prime Minister of Greece. So there is a, a closing of a circle and the beginning uh, of a continuing uh, a direction of uh, close ties. These ties are very natural between Greece uh, and Israel. First, because there is a kinship, an ancient kinship between us. Uh, Jerusalem and Athens, Athens and Jerusalem are the two foundations of Western civilization. Uh, and uh, uh, we're very proud to be the bearers of that legacy. And we're very proud to be the joint bearers of that legacy. Uh, second, there was an anomaly that for some reason our two modern democracies at the edge of the Mediterranean, in the Eastern Mediterranean, did not have these close and natural contacts. And so once we established them, everything started to flow, and it's flowing in the right direction. Uh, we have common interests, we face common challenges, we have extraordinary common opportunities. Uh, the challenges in, in the world and in our region are obvious, everything from firefighting, uh, Greek pilots, uh, I always uh, mention this, Greek pilots, a Greek pilot turned, uh, uh, extinguished uh, the fires in, uh, in Haifa uh, a few years ago. Uh, we uh, have uh, complementary emergency services, we cooperate there, and this of course extends to a much larger goal of ensuring security and stability and prosperity in our region. And prosperity can only be ensured if we can ensure security and stability. There is a widespread defense cooperation, uh, both in training, now in defense projects, and various uh, possibilities that we believe uh, we can cooperate in to assure that stability and that security in our region. This extends to cyber security uh, and the joint efforts that uh, we're making in this regard. It, uh, extends to intelligence sharing, to every field that enables our two democracies uh, and our two countries that seek peace and stability to assure peace and stability in our region. The opportunities are vast. They include uh, physical resources and uh, the products of the mind. The physical resource, the obvious physical resource is gas. We have, uh, or we have Findings of gas, substantial findings of gas offshore. Cyprus has that too. And our most important project, which we discussed uh, at length uh, and will continue to discuss over lunch, is the laying of the East Med pipeline that will connect the gas fields of uh, Israel and Cyprus through Greece, through Cyprus to Greece, uh, to Europe. This, is, uh, uh, this would be the longest underwater uh, pipeline in the world. Uh, we're committed to it. We discussed about how to advance it. On the products of the mind, we talked about the vast potential that our cooperation can do to enhance the capacity for innovation in the high-tech industries in both our countries. Greece has an abundant supply of very talented engineers uh, and scientists, uh, and Israel is obviously in that place too, and we seek, our high-tech industries seek to uh, expand their abilities, and there's no better place to do it in Greece. That's already happening in Cyprus. We think with the reforms that you are bringing, uh, Prime Minister, to Greece, and the fact that the markets are taking note, everybody's taking note, well, I can assure you Israel, too, is taking note, and I think the Israeli high-tech uh, industry uh, is eager to hear uh, your vision of the future this afternoon. So 
you know that you have our, not only our blessings, but our, uh, our confidence in the direction in which you're putting uh, Greece economically and in the joint cooperation between us in this area as well. It will serve both our economies and both our peoples. The final area that, we, that I'm going to mention today, we have other areas obviously of, uh, of uh, uh, cooperation, like uh, marine agriculture, which I think is the way to feed the, the world's population in the future with proteins. Uh, we have uh, many, many fields of uh, uh, potential cooperation, but the one that I'll talk about is a simple one. It's called tourism. We had uh, an incredible million point two, one point two million Israeli tourists in Greece uh, last year. Uh, one point two million Israeli tourists. When I first met one of your predecessors, the number was I think around fifty thousand. So it's grow I promised him that it would get up to four hundred thousand. It's tripled since. Uh, this is uh, an expression also of the sympathy. Uh, and the high regard in which uh, Israelis hold uh, Greece. Uh, obviously, we've had a problem. We were expecting to uh, be able to increase that number easily, but Corona is getting in our way. We are looking now at the possibility of uh, uh, targeting the opening of uh, tourism, uh, in which case Greece and Cyprus will be the first uh, points of destination. And we would like to set August 1st as a target date. This is uh, contingent on what happens in, uh, in terms of the, uh, uh, the numbers of the epidemic, whether we keep it under control. But if we are satisfied with the numbers, then what we would like to do is uh, target August 1st as the opening, uh, the date of the opening of the skies. אנחנו מדברים פה על יעד, תאריך יעד של הראשון באוגוסט לפתיחת השמיים, ליעדים קודם כל של יוון וקפריסין. אנחנו, זה תלוי, זה תלוי במה יקרה ב, במגפה, מה יקרה ב, עם הקורונה, אבל אם המספרים יאפשרו זאת, זהו תאריך היעד לפתיחת השמיים, זו בשורה חשובה מאוד לישראל, אני מאמין גם ליוון. So that is our, that is our uh, plan. Uh, part of it. We have many, many other things that uh, we're considering, but I think this reflects the fact that you're here with your ministers, with uh, the ministers of the Israeli government, talking about these various uh, areas of cooperation, I think tells us that uh, uh, Greece and Israel have a tremendous past, but an even greater future together. Welcome. Welcome, friend. Thank you. And a shaking of hands in the air. Distant uh, yes. shaking of hands. Indeed. Corona. Yes, yes, indeed. Thank you so much, Prime Minister, and we'll continue with the statement of the Prime Minister of the Hellenic Republic, Mr. Kiakos Mitsotakis. Well, first of all, let me start by expressing um, my gratitude to Prime Minister Netanyahu for the very warm welcome and hospitality he has extended uh, to my uh, entire delegation. And uh, as I prepared for this trip and I was going through my archives, uh, I found a statement made by my late father, Konstantin Mitsotakis, back in 1990, when he said at the time that the friendship between Greece and Israel is and should continue to be a fundamental pillar of Greek foreign policy. That statement was made at a time when this relationship was not so obvious as it is uh, today. But I still feel that these remarks have never felt more prescient than they do today. And I have thought a lot about the meaning of those um, words in the past uh, few weeks. We had a chance to virtually um, uh, celebrate, uh, commemorate the 30th anniversary of the establishment of our diplomatic um, um, uh, relations between our two countries on uh, May uh, 21st, and I am here today on the first uh, post-COVID phase one, I should say, um, uh, trip, foreign trip that I make with eight uh, of my ministers to talk to the new uh, Israeli uh, government about ways that we can mutually strengthen but also broaden our strategic partnership through closer cooperation in a number of key uh, areas. 
And I would like to point out that this is a very strong strategic partnership. Uh, it's solid. Uh, it stands on its own merit. It's not determined by other actors. But it is a relationship that can uh, grow and strengthen still further. We've had a chance with um, the Prime Minister to uh, talk about um, COVID-19. Uh, and uh, we, we participate, uh, jointly participate, um, uh, in a group of countries from around the group, which is called um, Smart COVID-19 Management, where we have shared valuable uh, lessons and experiences on how to tackle um, uh, this uh, unique and devastating um, um, uh, problem. I think we've both done a pretty good job uh, in addressing the first wave of the uh, pandemic. Uh, however, we know that after successfully overcoming the first phase, it would be far from smart management if we were to relax our guard uh, today. And it's important to constantly send the message that we must stay um, uh, vigilant, we must prepare for a possible second wave, and hopefully uh, technology and breakthroughs in medical science uh, will uh, help us uh, in this front, and we've had a chance to discuss also very interesting work that is done uh, by scientists here uh, in, uh, in Israel uh, on this uh, front. At the same time, we fully recognize that we need to restart our economies uh, and return to a new uh, normal. Uh, both our countries are leading tourist destinations, uh, and uh, uh, for us, it is important to open Greece to foreign tourists, but uh, we will place their safety and their health as uh, our number one priority. So as of July 1st, uh, we will be uh, accepting uh, direct flights into all our main uh, tourism destinations. And hopefully, if things go uh, according to plan, uh, as of August 1st, uh, uh, Israeli tourists will be able um, uh, to travel uh, to, um, uh, to Greece, and we're looking forward to welcoming them. Hopefully, we can extend the season uh, into October, why not uh, November, to make up uh, for some of the lost ground. What I do want to, uh, to tell you is that we have worked very, very hard to ensure the safety of our guests. We have very strict health protocols. Uh, we have strengthened our medical facilities in all tourist resorts. We've thought hard about how uh, we can uh, open up um, uh, our tourism um, uh, industry to foreign travelers, uh, but we will do it uh, again by placing their safety, their health uh, as our uh, number one priority. But, um, we've also spoken about other um, uh, aspects uh, of our relationship. We will be signing uh, protocols regarding agriculture, energy, tourism, cyber. I place particular emphasis uh, on our cooperation when it comes to uh, cybersecurity. I'll be meeting with a group of um, uh, Israeli investors um, who are either active in Greece uh, or interested in investing in, uh, in Greece. There are significant, significant opportunities for uh, investments um, uh, in Greece during this period. We have a stable pro-reform oriented uh, government with an absolute majority in power that has placed attracting foreign um, uh, investors as our number one priority. Uh, and when I look, um, uh, for example, at what is happening uh, in, in your tech space and in our tech space, the synergies, Prime Minister, are more than obvious. You're looking for highly qualified engineers. We have an abundance of highly qualified engineers in, in our country. We are one and a half hour away, same time zone. Uh, we offer you an entry uh, into the uh, EU uh, market. We, have, we both have huge diasporas. We try to encourage our people to come back either to Israel uh, or to Greece. We have so many talented engineers who are abroad who would like to come back to Greece and why not um, uh, work also for Israeli companies that set up a presence uh, in our country. So uh, in that space uh, in particular, uh, I see tremendous uh, uh, opportunities. Uh, but of course, um, there are also opportunities in other sectors. We've spoken a lot about how we can strengthen our defense uh, cooperation, not just operationally, but also in terms of defense infrastructure. Our Minister of Defense um, uh, is going to be having uh, very uh, interesting meetings uh, with his uh, uh, counterpart. Uh, there's much more we can do um, in terms uh, of complementarity between uh, our defense industries. And of course, you pointed out the tremendous importance of our trilateral uh, relationship, Israel, Greece, Cyprus. 
Um, uh, this is uh, uh, a, um, uh, a format that, with the addition of the United States in the 3 plus 1 format, uh, has a vision of a peaceful uh, Eastern Mediterranean. But of course, the, uh, it was in this context that the vision for the East Med uh, pipeline was born. Uh, we're very, very happy to have you in Athens uh, on January 2nd when we actually uh, signed the pipeline and looking forward uh, uh, also bringing Italy uh, on board and starting in earnest uh, to work on this emblematic project, which is a project of great interest for Europe as a whole because we're looking for alternative sources of natural gas uh, and uh, we're looking to exploit uh, whatever gas is found uh, in, uh, in the Eastern Mediterranean. Of course, um, we also had a chance to talk about the broader um, uh, region. Um, I set out what I consider our view to be regarding Turkey's aggressive behavior in the Eastern Mediterranean. Um, we consider this activity to be a threat to regional uh, peace and stability, uh, raised uh, with the Prime Minister recent uh, incidents of uh, uh, illegal and provocative Turkish behavior at our sea, air, and land borders, uh, and of course spoke a lot about the destabilizing effect that uh, Turkey has played vis-a-vis -vis its relationship with Libya and what we consider to be a completely null and void uh, agreement regarding the delimitation uh, of maritime zones between those two countries. Uh, we will always pursue peace, uh, having uh, at the foundation the respect for international law uh, and the United Nations Convention for the Law of the Seas. These are the main principles. Um, that we applied when we signed uh, a delimitation uh, agreement with Italy uh, a few days ago, and uh, it's exactly on these premises that uh, we want to build the framework for a broader um, uh, regional um, um, cooperation. So uh, I think, as uh, the Prime Minister said, we uh, are at a turning point where we can take stock of what happened over the past 30 years but I'm so confident that this is a relationship that can deliver so much more to the benefit of both our people, both on the strategic uh, geopolitical side, on the economic side, side on the cultural side. Um, we always feel so much um, at home when we come uh, to Israel, and I'm sure the same, I know, I'm not sure the same applies uh, to Israeli is visiting uh, uh, Greece, uh, uh, and this is a, a relationship that goes back for uh, um, thousands uh, uh, of years, and it can only grow stronger and have a brighter future. So again, uh, Prime Minister, thank you so much for uh, the warm welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Prime Minister. And I would kindly ask both of you to remain on the stage for the signing ceremony of the bilateral agreement. And for that, I invite to the stage <clears throat> Mr. Nikos Dendias, Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Hellenic Republic, and Mr. Gabi Ashkenazi, Mr. Minister of Foreign Affairs of the State of Israel, to sign a joint statement of intent on cooperation in the field of agriculture between the Ministry, Ministry of Agriculture of the State of Israel and the Ministry of Rural Development and Food of the Hellenic Republic. If I can ask the two ministers to take a photo with an agreement. Mask or unmask? 
stay, stay far, stay far apart. I'm, I'm the only one who absolutely insists you put on, the mask on, you know, on just no, no. Uh, constantly nudging my colleagues to wear masks. To well, to separate primarily, so they don't get close. Thank you so much, ministers of foreign affairs. And I now invite Mr. Konstantinos Khatitakis, the Minister of Environment and the Energy of the Hellenic Republic, and Mr. Yuval Steinitz, Mr. Minister of Energy of the State of Israel, to sign the Joint Declaration on Energy. We don't have a big, you, you don't place them all in one place? Well, we'll start at the next cabinet meeting, but we've had them virtually. These are, our table is relatively tight. We took, we have an enormous number of... How big is your cabinet? 34. 34. And the only together? We don't, yeah. we don't have, we, get, we, we, yeah, we don't have the ultimate meeting. Thank you very much, ministers. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. We will continue we'll with the third agreement, and I invite to the stage Mr. Harris Teoharis, Minister of Tourism of the Hellenic Republic, and Mr. Asaf Zamir, Minister of Tourism of the State of Israel to sign a joint statement between the Ministry of Tourism of the State of Israel and the Ministry of Tourism of the Hellenic Republic on cooperation in the field of tourism. Take the ministers of tourism and for the signing of the last agreement, I would invite to the stage Mr. Pirakakis Kiriakos, Minister of Digital Governments of the Hellenic Republic, and Mr. Igal Una. Director General of the National Cyber Directorate to sign a joint statement of intent between the Israeli National Cyber Directorate and the Ministry of Digital Governments, Governance of the Hellenic Republic on cooperation in the field of cybersecurity.
Please stand up for the photo. Thank you very much. The signing ceremony is over. Now we'll continue for the traditional photo of the two governments. I will ask everyone to stay seated until the prime ministers leave the room. And I will invite the prime ministers to move to the Judea Hall, which is on the left-hand side. Wait, please stay seated.